All right. Before I begin, I'd like to tell you about a few of my favorite things. Tom Hanks, big fan. The movie Apollo 13, which Tom Hanks was in. The moon, which Tom Hanks can see at night. And skin lesions, which Tom Hanks may or may not have. So now you're wondering, what do all these things have to do with each other other than Tom Hanks? And also, why skin lesions? <laughs> to answer your questions, I'm going to tell you about an internship that I had last summer. Last summer, I was really honored to be selected to intern at a data analytics company, which is essentially means that the company is really good at taking big data and finding patterns in it and um, different kinds of information that can lead to more informed decisions whether that's for improving business models or for analyzing the efficacy of a new drug that's on the market. Now, before I even heard of this internship, I was already really into tinkering and programming and math and science. And so when I heard about this opportunity, I was ecstatic. I mean, this was going to be my big break. I've had 17 years of experience in the industry of being alive, and now I was going to change the world. Yeah. So in February, I began stalking the company software on the internet, and I began brainstorming some ideas for projects that I might want to pursue with the software. So I decided I really like this idea of image analysis. And for those of you who know me really well, you probably have an idea of what these projects might be, whether that's analyzing the trends in global warming with satellite images, analyzing MRI scans to track brain tumors, or even facial recognition. So you get it, I really like science, okay? But the problem with all of these projects that I thought of was, where would I get the data sets? Where would I get all of these images? But I still really wanted to combine my interests in both the biological sciences and in the computational sciences. So I thought, what about skin lesions? I mean, as far as the data set goes, you don't need to worry, because believe me, people really like posting this kind of image on the internet. <laughs> Basically, what I wanted to do was to create a software, a skin cancer detection software or analysis software, that can take an image of a lesion and determine solely from that image whether that, uh, the lesion is malignant. And so this can have many implications, right? Whether it's for patient self-care, patient accessibility to medical devices, or even early detection of skin cancer. So I had done a lot of research at this point, and in the creative process, I was... <laughs> Right about here. <laughs> yeah, so there are two ways an internship can go from here. You can say, look, I'm just an intern. So in this internship, I'm just going to do what I'm told and only what I'm told. And that's completely valid and very necessary in many internship positions. There's another option, and that's to say, look, I have an idea or I'm solidifying this idea, and I'm going to pursue this idea to the end. And that requires going to your manager and saying, hey, I just met you and this is crazy, but here's my idea, and can I do it, maybe? Yeah, so I went with option two. Luckily, my manager was really supportive, and she said, look, this summer is about you exploring your interests. So she put me in touch with two of my mentors who were really experienced with the company's software and with image analysis. And after a few brainstorming sessions, they basically let me loose. And I would regularly go back to them and talk about syntax and algorithms. So the craziest thing about all of this is that I had done programming before, but not in this language, which meant a completely different syntax. And my mentors helped with that, but I had to learn this language from scratch. And on top of that, I also hadn't done image analysis before, which has a pretty steep learning curve. And on top of that, I only had two months to complete this project because there was an intern showcase at the end of the summer. And on top of that, I had to do research on previous algorithms that had been done in this field of study, which I had no clue about. So there was a lot to do. Speaking of those algorithms, there were three different steps that I wanted to accomplish in this program that I wanted to make. So keep in mind that this image is actually from my software. So the first step is you have an image of a skin lesion that you want to analyze and you want to somehow extract or isolate that border from the lesion. So you want a clear border that is of the lesion. And then after you have that border, you want some kinds of variables or metrics that you can pull from that border. 
And those variables will give you some indication of whether that lesion could be malignant. And then after you have all of your data, then you need a statistical model that can sequence all of that data and tell you where in your data set on a scale of really malignant to really benign your lesion is. In this case, I use discriminant analysis, which is one kind of a statistical model. The good thing about this TEDx is you're also going to learn some stuff about skin lesions. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah, so doctors and dermatologists typically use five variables to determine whether a lesion could be malignant. And they're pretty easy to remember. It's A, B, C, D, E. A stands for asymmetry, B for border irregularity, C for color variation, D for diameter or size, and E for evolution. So software can have a pretty hard time with D and E because with diameter or size, you need some kind of a visual scale on the image, like a ruler, which not all images are going to have. And with evolution, you need a series of images over time of the same lesion from the same angle, which is pretty hard to do, let's be honest. So, I decided to eliminate D and E. And then I discovered something else. When I was doing my research, I found PhD dissertations where someone just took one of these variables, like they took asymmetry, and they just did a PhD dissertation about asymmetry. And after looking at this, I was like, wow, this is going to be really hard. So I'm going to try to do A, B, and C, and then I'm going to add another variable of my own, which is T. T is for texture, and that basically is to compensate for the fact that the software can't exactly touch your skin and be like, oh, that is a very rough mole that you have there. <laughs> the algorithm for texture basically goes like this. So I put the image through a series of filters, with the last of which is an edge detection filter. And so that puts the image in black and white. And then from there, I calculate the ratio of the pixels of the edges detected on the inside of the lesion versus on the border. And that gives me an idea of how much variation is going on in the interior of the lesion. And that variation actually corresponds to malignancy. And I also was able to create algorithms for the A, B, and C variables in addition to the texture variable. All right, so back to this idea of making goals, right? Let's be honest, this was a really outrageous goal. I mean, I'm a high school student who has two months to do this, is trying to tackle four variables, and is learning this new programming language from scratch, and then is trying to make a software with an applicable purpose. All of the odds were stacked against me. But I was just really excited about making this software, and so I just went and had a ball. I mean, in a typical week, I would consult with my mentors a couple of times, and then I'd go to some intern socials, and I'd come back to the office, and do lots of programming. But I'd also be writing blogs on the company site and writing programs and scripts that had nothing to do with my project because I was honestly just so excited about learning a new programming language. And then I would go home and give my parents an earful, and then I would program some more. But as you would suspect, there were some setbacks in this process. And just to update you where we are in the creative process, we are right here. <laughs> Yeah, one of my programs actually worked on the first try. And all the programmers in here are going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, all of my other programs required many more tries. Just to give you an idea of how much I had to tweak and change my algorithms and programs, I took a screenshot of the folder where I kept all of my files. Yeah, so in the creative process, final never really means final. And just for kicks, here's the file that I actually ended up using, which is buried in all the other drafts that I made. And just for extra kicks, here's a screenshot of the files that I used for this TEDx. Yeah, what a great system, right? You just keep adding final until you're actually done. <laughs> I'm not joking, I'm serious. Like, that was the file I sent in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So in August, after my internship, I was really excited to finally have this working software that could take an image of a lesion, put it through a lot of data extraction algorithms, and finally spit out an answer of where on the spectrum from very malignant to very benign the, this lesion was. And I could extract 44 different metrics from every single lesion image. And I'm really proud to say that with my current data set, the misclassification rate is only 5%. Now, I'm also hoping in the future to improve my algorithms and also to increase the data set. 
this summer, I was really excited about being able to use my programming skills and be able to create the software with such an applicable purpose that can reach so many people. And I was really humbled to work alongside such intelligent, resourceful, and supportive mentors. And look, this all happened because I said, hey, I have a really outrageous idea, and I'm just going to pursue it and see where it takes me. I was also really excited to be able to present at the company's annual international conference, which is where a lot of engineers and entrepreneurs and data scientists convene to talk about data science. So imagine this, I am standing at this conference presenting to these professionals about my project. And yeah, I was out of my comfort zone. I mean, I had done speech and debate before, right? But not in front of 30 professionals who are experts in what I was talking about. So I was really scared. But luckily, they were really supportive and we had really engaging conversations. I was also able to present at three other events other than this conference and one of them was to the co-founder of the company. This is the power of a goal. Now, so the reason I brought up Tom Hanks and Apollo 13 is because all of this reminds me of that saying that we know all too well. Shoot for the moon and even if you don't make it, you'll land among the stars. Okay, so first, the scientist in me is saying, look, the stars are actually farther than the moon, so like, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Sorry to burst your bubble. But in addition, you weren't shooting for the stars. You were shooting for the moon. And this summer, what I realized was, if you really want to make it to the moon, then you're going to have to shoot for Pluto. Yeah, for me, that was being able to present at this conference and make this software. And we can set these unattainable goals on all sorts of scopes, and many of these can be lifelong. Tom Hanks had to move 10 times by the time he was 10. That's a lot of moving for a kid, and it can make you very lonely in your childhood. And Tom Hanks has talked about how he first got into acting because he was trying to cope with his loneliness. Look where he is now. The point of setting these unattainable goals is not so that you'll eventually be inhabiting the moon, but rather so that you know the steps to get there, so that you can do it all over again the next time you actually want to go to Pluto. I want to end on this quote that's by astronaut Jim Lovell, who was the commander of the Apollo 13 mission. When it comes to achieving our goals, half of the battle is just making the decision to go for it. We all have moons. We all have Plutos, and at times they will seem really far-fetched. But now all we have to do is to count down and lift off. Hanks.